ways to buy supplies, more efficient ways to operate, not filling positions in the street, wastewater and water departments when people would leave, no routine raises for management, we hired a new finance director at a lower salary than the previous one, we didn't fill the planning director position for five years even though the charter requires we have a planning director and instead the service director and city manager took turns filling in for that position. Um, when we did finally hire a planning director, he began as an intern so that I could pay him $10 an hour and save the city some more money for a while. Um, current service director is making the same salary as the service director did in 2001. That's been 14 years. As a city manager, I am doing my previous job, executive assistant, in addition to the city manager's position, and I'm saving the city almost $48,000 a year by doing that over what the city manager made before. So we are serious about the cuts, and we have been working on doing the cuts. Just this year alone, 2014, sorry, last year, um, we spent less than $102,000 less than was appropriated in the budget at the beginning of 2014. So we did start the cuts many, long before this last couple of months. Um, Howie had a, just a, one or two things he wanted to bring up as well. Uh, thank you. And, uh, these items are, since I, I have worked in the field here with the city, I started in 2000, and I know um, each department, I'm just going to give a quick uh, brief uh, description, the water department, it is an enterprise fund. Uh, they are self, uh, supposed to be self-sufficient with their own user fees. They're required by the EPA to have working capital and be self-supported at, at all times. Uh, the EPA recommended staff is four for that uh, our, for our facility, and that staff was reduced to three in uh, 2004 after retirement, so we would maintain those three. Anytime we have a sanitary survey, uh, we get a hit on the report from the uh, Ohio EPA rep. Uh, that department has two vehicles that are 2001 or older, and just this year we had to just replace the dump body um, on that vehicle to save money. Um, there was uh, some questions on, you know, how does your crew look when you're out there? But I wanted to pass on that our water main breaks are repaired with a four-man crew for safety and manpower. Fourth person usually pulled from the street crew. Uh, main breaks are performed live and under, under, under high pressure. So at any given time, if someone drives by, uh, it may look like someone's holding the shovel, but we have people there for safety reasons. Uh, and then typically our residential service files are performed normally with three personnel. Um, so I did, that was just kind of a brief, brief on water. Uh, wastewater department, same thing, enterprise fund. And as stated in our ordinance, required by the EPA to have working capital and be self-supporting. Uh, those are based on user fees only and to not be uh, supported by tax dollars. Uh, the EPA approved uh, operation manual requires six personnel to operate that facility. That staffing was then reduced to five when uh, some automation in the 80s and early 90s was implemented, reducing it to five. And now currently, uh, since 2005 after retirement or an individual leaving, uh, we've been operating with a staff of four. With that uh, four, we have taken major hits from the EPA, um, has written us up in that department and given us violations for marginally or poor maintenance in that facility. Uh, 2014 uh, required plant repair funds as uh, our finance director had to uh, move approximately $120,000 of our capital fund which has been paid in there for years and years for future um, replacement of equipment. We had to pull that money out of there and put it into the operating fund uh, just to keep it in the black. Public works, uh, the cemetery is an enterprise fund um, which uh, should be self-supporting. In 2001, we had uh, five full-time, plus a mechanic, and plus two seasonal that did the cemetery, parks, streets, and building maintenance. Uh, from 2002 to present, we've had three full-time, a mechanic, and two seasonal. Cemetery operated by, the cemetery currently is operated by one full-time and one seasonal employee. Uh, community service and prior workers um, from the Clark County Sheriff's Office, which we do thank you for that. Uh, to help us weed eat during the holidays, especially Mother's Day, things like that. Uh, streets and parks and building maintenance performed by two full-time and one seasonal. We have one full-time mechanic to repair all the equipment and assist other public works departments. 
uh, such as backhoe operations with water or do backhoe and uh, other help down at the wastewater department. Major cost savings approach happened in 2003 where the city purchased a used Ohio Edison uh, bucket truck for $7,000 to perform our own tree work and maintenance of street signals. Um, before we used to have a contract out to our local tree companies and a normal tree removal runs anywhere between six and a thousand dollars to cut down and remove brush. The savings is enormous considering we have approximately 40 ash trees to remove due to the annual ash borer. And that's just this year alone. Um, and so you figure uh, anywhere from 500 to a thousand times 40 just in this one year um, is huge uh, when our own crews can do it. Uh, the newest vehicle in those apartments is a 2001 also, which currently needs, uh, it's our big medium duty dump. Uh, it's got holes in the body, it's rusted, um, only the cab looks nice, pretty blue, but the dump body looks more brown now because of the rust. So that was just kind of an update of where, where, where we were with uh, crews, how we've shared resources uh, to help each other out. That is all I have. Thank you both. I was very nice. Uh, welcome Sheriff Kelly and Chief Deputy. Thank you for being here tonight, taking time out of your busy schedules to give us some information. I certainly appreciate it. You wanted to go right away? Right, I think um, we wanted to keep our discussions to the cuts that could be made in the general fund since that is the fund that is in the is hurting. Right. Um, and I think we could start with the sheriff's office, the deputies, and that way if they get finished and they need to stay for the rest of the, the work session. Um, I think maybe uh, if we just start out with each council member saying what they think as far as cuts for that. Um, Ethan, do you want to start and just go down the line and, and see? Should we do council members or let the sheriff give us the sure. information that he has? That would be fine. Well, I think that would be a better way to handle it. Thank you, Sheriff. Well, thank you all. You know, I'm usually out here just once a week and have dinner here in New Carlisle. And uh, my chief deputy, if you haven't met uh, Dora Wright, uh, he also lives, he actually lives in Mad River Township. His wife teaches for the Tecumseh District, so we're pretty well entrenched in the western Clark County and uh, love this community. The contract with the Sheriff's Office has been in existence for over 34 years. Um, the first time it was enacted, uh, it was the first one in the United States and it was a model and Canal Winchester and other communities across the United States have actually asked us for copies of our contract. At one time, if you remember, uh, we had a sergeant, Butch Crow, we had a corporal on each shift, second and third, and we actually had 10 deputies assigned here to the city of New Carlisle, um, and it was just a great assignment here, it really was. Through the course of the last decade, uh, when you lost your half percent, we have continued to decrease the number of deputies assigned out here. And this uh, last three years, I think it's been four deputies. Um, and you asked us to give you a one month extension of the current contract, and we did that. Uh, one of the deputies assigned out here kind of saw that there's going to be some kind of cuts, and he applied for a position. And he still lives here in the city, but he's uh, working in Moorfield Township. They passed a one mill five year levy, and so he's been assigned to that. So <clears throat> we talked, uh, the city manager and I, and uh, our legal advisors uh, said that we actually needed to have an addendum. And what we've decided, if it's your pleasure, would be at least through the month of January, we cut the cost by one-fourth, um, taking it from 28000 a month to 21000 paying for three deputies instead of four. That would save you some money right there. Uh, it's actually $7,248.03 that would be cut. What you have in front of you is the total reports, arrests, and calls that were taken only by those four deputies. Just those four deputies. And that's for 2014. I listen, and the chief deputy listens to the radio constantly. I have a portable in my bag that I carry with me. And over the weekend, uh, Ash 
actually yesterday afternoon I heard several calls come in on Hamilton. So I asked our IT person to give me all the calls. Our deputy lady worked 7 to 3 on Friday, and when he got off at 3, no one was on duty except county deputies. So I had him go through all the calls from 3 o'clock Friday until 7 o'clock this morning. There were 16 calls that we actually needed a deputy to respond to. Out of those 16 calls, 10 of them were taken by county deputies, general fund county deputies. So 62.5% of the calls in the city were taken by not deputies under contract. And they ranged from thefts, there were car break-ins over on Hamilton, vandalisms, there were uh, arrests up here at the Speedway, uh, warrant service, uh, I have the whole list of calls, but that's what happens on a regular basis. Every week there are periods when there are no contract deputies on duty. The contract that we currently have calls for if a deputy is off longer than two weeks, we have to replace them. This past year we had two of the four off for months and it actually cost the taxpayers of Clark County thousands of dollars to supplement the contract here in New Carlisle. So as we go forward in 2015, I, I don't know what you're going, I know the decisions are tough. Uh, we've had to make tough decisions. One of the things I would suggest is that the police administrator position, I believe that your charter could make your city manager the safety director uh, and to compile this data I've actually hired a Wittenberg senior student who's my research and analysis and she only works 20 hours a week but I believe she could collect this data and email it to you so that you wouldn't actually have to have a sergeant and he gets two hours of overtime for being here that would save you I don't know at least some money right there. You could cut that position. Um, we're willing to work with you, but if you decide to go to two deputies, or I see Nancy Brown is here, if we could talk about sharing the cost two and a half. If there are times when there is not a deputy on duty in the city of New Carolina, as the sheriff, I'm charged with keeping the peace. Nobody's defined that yet. But if there's an emergency, I can tell you, we will be here. If there's a break-in at a house that robbed in Speedway, we will be here in full force. But if it's a simple, they threw my trash cans over the fence, they broke into my car sometime over the weekend, that there'll have to be a delay. There has to be some cut in service. The problem is that these people over the weekend, when no deputy was on duty, all they see is a black car with a star. They don't know if it's got a new Carlisle on the fender or not. The deputies are all dressed alike. And so they don't know that they're not getting the additional service. And the taxpayers of Clark County are supplementing the city. If it's an emergency, we'll be here. But if it's a non-emergency situation, they'll have to wait. And when the deputy comes on duty, they'll have to take the reports. I mean, it, it's just, we cannot, I can't continue to spend 62% of the, or, or answer the calls. And I would say that that's a routine, that's average. Uh, when you look back across the whole year, uh, and especially when there's vacations, sick, all of that, there's a whole lot of time when there's not a contract deputy here, but there is uh, service provided. Last year, we all were upset about the school situation. And the council's decision was that they thought that a deputy should be here at 7 to 3 to be there for the schools. In the research, we're not getting calls. We, the county, provides the DARE program for New Carlisle Elementary. Josh Berner's the DARE officer. He's there, I think, two and a half days when he's doing the DARE. I think they're 
seven classes of their students. I mean, it's a, a big school. Um, and he's in the building when school opens, and he's there all day. He's there. There are cars around, and, and I, I truly would like to explore the possibility of sharing a deputy with Bethel Township. They could go back and forth between calls, but if you go to two deputies, I really think that if we overlap the shifts and had them work 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. and 4 p.m. until midnight, our other shifts are 7 to 3 and 3 to 11, there would be an hour of overlap. And I honestly, when I was coming into town, you have a downtown. You got two brand new drugstores right on the corner. We both came in Jefferson. And on Saturdays, it is busy. And I really think that you should have a deputy on duty on Saturday. And then they would be off. They'd work 8 to 4, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, take Thursday, Friday off, or whatever. But, you know, we want to have this downtown boom. We want to see more businesses move in. And safety and security is an issue. And if, like now, our deputy who's assigned down here works 7 to 3, Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday, he's not, there's no one. Now, I did have a second deputy who worked noon until 8, but he's gone. So that's my suggestion. If you want the deputy 7 to 3, Monday through Friday, but I'm looking at the most coverage you can get for your dollars. So the cost is... We are union. It is a fixed cost. We've adjusted it. We used to charge years ago, I think it was a 5% administration fee for my time and all the other time. We don't do that anymore. We charge exactly for the cost of the deputies insurance. Some are family, some are single. We've cut everywhere we can cut. We support you everywhere we can. But there's a breaking point for us as well. So, excuse me. Any questions or whatever your pleasure is? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, and I don't know what's going to happen no more than the other If you call out was to cut back to two deputies, would we still get the same service as far as the detectives, the crime lab, the truck, and all that? That would not change one bit. I am the sheriff of Clark County, and when we had these robberies in 2014, we had three of them. You had detectives, you had the crime van out yes. here, uh, we had command staff out here, we made arrests, all of that. It's the minor, the dogs barking, the uh, car parked out here, you know, that's been sitting there for three weeks. Uh, that's the current crimes. Yeah. The in progress, the, the violent crimes, you know, if it's domestic out here, now, when there are deputies not on duty, we always send the, the, the cars. But you're going to get, when it's an emergency, you're going to get everything. Okay, but I just want to make sure those were still Never change. Place. Okay. Never change. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. That's what I want to ask you. Yeah, John, let's, let's go. Ahead. Uh, John, go ahead. You know, I like the idea of sharing, you know, with Beth. The only thing I don't understand, and I know this has to be worked out, you know, is... You know, who's going to do the maintenance in the cars, who's going to the time, you know, from one place to another. Those are those the particulars. You know, and I'm sure that has to be done by legal, you know, uh, Nancy's group and our group, you know, and I know that, that, that has to be done. Okay, and I'd like to go, you know, my idea is three deputies, but, you know, I have a question here. If, one, if we only have one deputy, who does the backup? the car from the, you know, even now, there's only one deputy on duty, and the, the, we always have a car from this district. in this district, because, you know, Bethel Township has 20,000 people, and we always have a car out here. We do a lot of traffic grant and work the 235 corridor. You know, last night we had a serious crash at Gurwa on 235. There's always a car out here, but when Dale Stahl, you know, got in a fight over here, and a neighbor came to help him. Uh, his nearest car was the district car, and he got here as quickly as possible, but that's how it is now. You know, there's only been, and we don't have it now, but there was a time when we had two deputies overlapping 
we had seven to three and, and eight to four and, and eight to or noon to eight and then uh, Beller comes on at eight o'clock at night. But okay, you see, you talked about the sergeant. Okay, you talked about the sergeant and how that could you know we could cut that out and save X amount of millions of dollars. <laughs> you know, so anyway. Is, is that possible? Is that is that what Sergeant Underwood does? This collect statistics. I thought that that you had to have so many a supervisor with so many. You know, if you go down, he's got four people now, and basically all he's doing is he's your kind of mediator. <laughs> yeah. He's our mediator. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, Kim and I talk by email every day if we need to if there's an issue and if i get a call of a complaint in the city of new carlisle i email it to the deputy who's working or i call dispatch and have them go on it right away um and i'm not trying to you know there's a he could work a ton of overtime in other areas but um as far as the stats and the data you know and if you need a a uniform deputy at your council meeting you could arrange to have your deputy that's working so it wouldn't cost you overtime. If you're trying to cut every cost you can, I'm just trying to help you out. And they would probably be better suited to come anyways because they're here and they know what's going on in the community. Sergeant so Randall Woods, he comes to the meeting, you know, your council meetings is all he attends uh, and does the statistics. He has an understanding of what's going on in New Carlisle, but he's not here taking the calls. Those deputies are. They would know exactly what this community is about. Are you finished, Joe? Yeah. Okay. Uh, two questions. One is, you know, I, I don't know how I feel about sharing the deputy. I'm not saying I'm against it or for it. I just don't know enough about the logistics of how it would work. So, one, I would like to hear the pros, which I think the pros would be obviously it's going to be a nice savings for us. But you're, uh, with anything, there's got to be some cons involved. So, I'd like to know that. But also, on a separate subject, could you explain, and, and you would explain probably better than anybody in this room, we've had a lot of people in the town ask why we don't have our own. Uh, sheriff's department. I mean, we all pretty much know that, you know, we get this huge bundle package contracting with the sheriff's department. Can you just explain what all comes, you know? You know, if a deputy, let's say, costs 100000 with all the fringe benefits and everything. So if you cut two, you're down to 200000 If you ha you're going to have your own chief, you're going to have to write your own policies, procedures. You're going to have to be responsible for all your own training, you know, the state of Ohio says every police officer has to have so many hours of training, firearms, everything that goes with it, and we make sure that that's done. All these people out here are trained, they're certified. Uh, Beller is now nationally recognized in drug interdiction and alcohol uh, apprehensions. Um, and so if you have your own chief, you're going to have to have your own policies and procedures. You're going to probably, you know, have high turnover because you look at smaller agencies, that's where I hire them from. Uh, the last two I hired, they were from other agencies. They spend about two or three years there and, and uh, then they want to go to the sheriff's office and uh, so you'd be facing that, and then you get into to try and balance your budget. If you're going to have 24 hour, you're going to have part time and volunteer officers. And you know it's hard enough with we have 20 command officers trying to keep track of our folks, and computers watching their every move and, and everything, and we still have issues. So you know that's your decision if. You know, German Township, you know, they've got their own, Enon, South Charleston. Uh, but in, and I'm just telling you the truth. German Township at 11 o'clock, you turn the lights out and go home. And the Sheriff's Office, we handle the calls there. Um, if there's a call in Enon and they need assistance, we send a car. South Charleston, we send a car. Uh, <clears throat> the State Patrol, you know, the State Patrol at night may only have one trooper for 400 square miles and we're their only backup as well i mean we're spread thin we do the i think a great job and we got the data to prove it but your sure. decision i think a lot of people just don't realize some of the, the perks that we get with cop you know, like you said you know the you know the detectives and the dogs and whatever it is that we need to, to get taken care of well just look at the heritage of flight 
I think we had 19 people working down here, directing traffic, extra duty, you know, again, a visible presence, safety and security. That's why it was a great time. People, it was, could have been a little warmer, you know, but. Yes, sir. Are you finished, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, well, right. I just want to thank you for coming out. I, I have two questions, and um, I don't mean, I, if it sounds critical of your department, I don't, don't mean it to be that way. Um, first, the first question I have is if, if a deputy were to be split, do we have a mechanism in place to ensure that 50% of the time is being spent here as well as the township? Because something I'm concerned with, and I don't think it would be an issue, but just to say if, if there's a lot of issues in a different part of the township, the deputy could maybe spend more time there and, and, and neglect the other half of it. Um, just wondering if there is a mechanism in place to make sure that we're having an even split. And then the second question I had, and it's more of an intangible, I'm not sure if anyone can really answer it, it's sort of philosophical, but anytime you have fewer people, naturally you're going to be able to, to cover less. And I know we've got um, people coming in from Dayton, from Cincinnati, for drugs, and, you're, and the, the Sheriff's Department has done an amazing job, and I want to thank you for the, the work you've done in stopping the prescription drugs and the heroin traffic, um, the car break breaks in, break ins, which I think are probably also connected to people trying to get money for drugs. And I'm worried that with fewer, if we were to cut, cut down on the number of officers we have, it would cut back on the prevention um, for crime. Um, I, think people would say, okay, we know there's no deputy here. Yes, there. if there was an emergency, we could have someone come in, but hey, it's sort of fair game in New Carlisle between these hours on this day. And I was wondering, I know it may be difficult to answer, but um, is, is that an issue that you have seen in these situations? So the, the first question I had was um, making sure that having some way to, to check for time. And the second one is, have you found that fewer coverage, less coverage brings in more crime? Well, I'm glad that Nancy's here, and we have a great relationship with Bethel Township, but you know, we're, we're exploring new territory of splitting the cost, but you know, our educational service officers, they're not assigned strictly to Tecumseh. They go to Tecumseh, they go to uh, Northwestern, they go to Green. We split the county in half, and if we have a situation at Tecumseh, that deputy will spend the day there. But they try and make up for it then by spending more time at Northwestern and Greenan. And if we have talked, you know, uh, we have a, a great deputy assigned to Bethel Township. He's a Tecumseh grant. He grew up. He loves this area. Um, and he's wanted to work with Deputy Bethel. He's very good at uh, traffic. And this 235 is a corridor of drug trafficking. But if there's a situation in Bethel where they're going to spend maybe all eight hours working on a crime there, but, you know, the same people that commit crimes in New Carlisle are breaking in or doing things over in Park Lane. We are all one. It's one school district, you know. That's one issue, and I don't know. We'd have to work that out. The second is another bang for your buck. Detective Ron Fader, who was a deputy here, is still, I have second shift detectives. And he is coming out to New Carlisle here, and he's running the uh, crime watch meetings. And through a crime watch, if we get people to lock their cars every time, lock their doors every time, if they report people walking down the middle of the street at 3 o'clock in the morning, those are things that we can do to prevent crime. And that's going to continue. I want Ron. He, 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 he likes crime watches. Uh, he enjoys getting out and talking to people, and you know he has a lot of connections here in New Carlisle. I think they meet right here, don't they, the crime watch? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to continue, but you know, our news media is here, and if they put out a headline that in New Carlisle, it's open season, nobody's, that's not true. Fewer deputies, yes, there's going to be less of a presence, but God is my witness, if there's a major crime, we're going to be here. We're not going to let any part of this community I can take you back to 1993. We laid off deputies. There were nights when it was me out here, and I had a news reporter, Wes Wilson, and we had a call in South Charleston, and our next call was here, and it was 35 miles. You know, and we made it through that. 
we will make it through this. We will work with you. I understand budgets, but the people in this community have to make a decision. If they want additional law enforcement presence, that's what, you know, Moorfield Township just passed a one mill levy because they understood the need for additional protection. And Bethel Township best just passed their renewal for five years, I believe. Um, and I think, you know, as government is asked to do more with less, I think we need progressive thinking and merging. And if we can work it out, I'm all for it. Thank you. Yeah, you finish. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to, go ahead. I'm with Bill. Thanks for coming out. All right. We appreciate having done business with you for all those years, and we're glad you want to still do it. Okay. All right. I would like you to verify or clear up a point or two made in the Saturday, January 3rd, Springfield News Sun. This is regarding your Moorfield Township contract. And I, I read from the paper. Moorfield Township voters have rejected a safety levy three times previous to the latest levy's passing, according to the Board of Election. Now, the part that about you, the two deputies will work only within township limits and will be assigned by a sheriff deputy that patrols a large district that includes the township. The big thing is, I know that the deputies in New Carlisle from time to time leave New Carlisle. They work New Carlisle primarily and all of Bethel Township also. If there's an emergency, uh, is it done the same way in Moorfield Township, or are they hung there and that's no, it? There's we just we said the same thing to the township trustees. If there is a situation, let's say it, uh, uh, there, there's a robbery at the Upper Valley Mall, mm -hmm. or an officer needs assistance, and they're the only car, and they, they can go, they will go. They will do what they need as quickly as possible and get back to the township and the area car or somebody else will take the report and they're not going to be tied up there for, you know, long period of time. But, you know, when there's a call here and uh, if there's the only deputy available to go back up a deputy down here at 235 in Garlow is right here, then that deputy goes down, but then they come right back. And it's the same thing if the deputy in Bethel Township is the only one available to come in here and back up the deputy here, make a traffic stop or whatever. Um, but when Moorfield Township, they originally proposed having their own police department. And it was rejected by the voters. This past vote was signed by the three township trustees and the letter that they sent out said that they were going to contract with the sheriff's office and I signed that letter and it was sent to every household in Warfield Township. That was, as I understand it, one of the reasons it was rejected is because they were going to start their own police department. One further question. Yes, sir. An officer needs assistance. Could you just, because there's more than just us listening here, could you give us two or three usual examples of what that would be? Deputy assigned here to uh, the city of New Carlisle. And he is out, I think it was 1130, I'm talking about Deputy Stahl. Mm -hmm. And uh, he went to talk to this gentleman and we'd had previous calls on this man, and this man struck him, and they're fighting before Deputy Stahl even knew anything, and he's trying to call for help, and the nearest car was the area car, but a citizen came out and helped. Um, people don't know what they don't know. Every single day, deputies get assaulted, deputies are in violent confrontations, uh, we have deputies bit, spit on, uh, fighting, just coming out here tonight, just now. Two deputies are going to one call 
suspected drugs. They're going to do a welfare check on the mother. The father's calling in because he suspects the mother's on drugs. And it's 6 o'clock on a Monday night. Um, Thursday night is the most violent day of the week for law enforcement. More police officers are killed on Thursdays than any other day of the week. Our busiest time starts at 11 a.m. and it goes until 7 p.m. And that's why when I've done studies, I did one out here and I wanted to change those hours 10 to 6. Mm -hmm. In the city of New Carlisle, it's a, it's a bedroom community and most people are sleeping. They don't call us until about 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, our call volume, and I've got it with me here as well, it's way down until about 10. People get up, start moving, um, but that's the reality. Thank you, yes, sir. Are you finished, Mr. Yes. Mr. Wells? Right, my first question is, is with about the uh, uh, sergeant. So would Sergeant would be going to a different department? Or would he? he, his job is keeping the stats. He gets the daily reports of the, the deputies and basically he just <clears throat> adds these numbers and puts them on a spreadsheet and, you know, he brings out these reports you get every month mm -hmm. and we has other functions at the sheriff's office besides the I, I was making sure like he wouldn't like if we no, 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 he's in charge of the ESOs he's assigned to the East District office and comes out here and he's paid two hours of overtime for every and I'm, I'm saying we could save you that by having these numbers calculated by another person I've hired a, a Wittenberg student and you know this isn't rocket science okay. putting this down all right, and my next question, do you know what percent of the time the township deputies come to New Carlisle? I do not. All right. Uh, Ms. Brown, do you, by any chance? I, I don't know what the percent is. I do know our deputy said it's common he spends uh, two hours a day up here. He said there have been days when he spent his whole shift up here. All right. Was, and then I'm all for a proponent of the joint deputy. I think that's a wonderful idea. Nancy and I talked about it and then you got involved, so thank you for coming, by the way. So, and I know we can't really discuss it much because we don't have attorneys here to pass out a contract well, or anything. We'd have to discuss, you know, what car they would use and, and all that sort of thing. But, you know, a couple of years ago, there was a whole group of folks from Clark County that went to Louisville and, and Indianapolis and talked about metropolitan government, you know, and. I'm not suggesting that, but we've got to look at ways that instead of everybody having their own, maybe sharing resources. In Clark County, we only had one record section. We shared it with the city of Springfield. We had one indoor range, one training room, one crime lab. We're still talking about maybe in my lifetime having one dispatch center instead of having two. Yeah, it just makes sense to share resources and, and uh, so if we can work this out with Bethel, you know, I think it could, it could work and be a, a template for other communities. Anything else? That's it. <clears throat> you like, yes, so sorry, just, no, once again, I don't know if I, I missed it or not, but what was, what are, there has to be cons with this, and I'm not saying I'm trying to find them, I'm just, but there, there's always a, a negative side to it. What, to a shared person? To, to a shared. What could, what could be some of the negatives? That the person who's assigned here, uh, uh, Howard says, I want you to go out and, and check on this and this and this because uh, they're stealing water or something. And, and the trustees in Bethel say, no, I want them to do this and this and this because we got an issue over here with, uh, you know, in Bethel, the deputy enforces their ordinances on weeds and junk and vacant properties and all sorts of things and so you know it just it could be a tug of war thing. yeah but you know in an ideal world you would see them 50 percent of that shift that they're working here or 50 percent of the township but if something let's say something occurred in the city of new carlisle that was really demanding and they had to be here the whole shift the township then suffers or vice versa if they had to be there so, I mean, it's, it's going to be a give and take, uh, you know. And we don't know from day to day when we come to work what that day has in store for us. That's, each day is a, is a different day. And law enforcement is, is a new day every day you walk in the door. So that's, that's what you're facing, and that's probably the biggest negative you're going to find in it. Okay. 
I think the positives will probably outweigh the negatives. When they robbed the bank downtown here two years ago, it was 100 degrees, you know, the Bethel definitely came in and stayed as long as needed to try and locate that person. The same thing when they robbed the Medway Bank, you know, the deputies here moved that way. You know, we were hoping to catch them a car moving or something. When we had a missing child here on Lake Avenue, uh, I don't know, four months ago, we brought everybody in. You know, and fortunately the child was like three doors away. But, you know, there has to be give and take. I think, and I don't know this to be true, but I think over in Clayton, in Montgomery County, that they have a, a shared township or Clayton you know, and Englewood, you mean? Yeah, in that area, something like that. Yeah, Clayton Union and Englewood. They're all. They're all together. They, share, they got fire departments and everything. They kind of share that. And um, and here in, in Clark County, years ago, the, the South Vienna talked with Harmony Township about letting South Vienna <laughs> officers go out into the township, and you know they were more interested in seeing how many citations they could write. I think that was a short-lived uh, proposition there. But I really think with our long-term relationship with Bethel, with New Carlisle, with all the people in this room, that we can make it work. Well, if I, may, may I say something? Then we'll get to us. Absolutely. Well, I've not had a chance here to be <laughs> um, Right now, we have three deputies, actually, because one has left us, which he was trying to preserve his job at that right. point to go to Moore, Moorefield. So we actually have three. You just said we're actually cutting monthly expenses down $7,000. We've proposed that, and that's up to Kim. I think you have to vote on it next council. Yeah, I'll be bringing another ordinance. When will the new contract for us be available at this point? Well, we're in contract negotiations with still, our deputies right open. now. Okay. Um, but. <laughs> This contract runs through the 31st. I don't think we're going to have a new contract by the 31st. But we could, uh, you know, they're not going to get a giant raise. So we may have to go ahead and extend again. Is that what Correct. you're thinking? You know, and our current contract, if you cut a deputy, the deputies here, they don't get laid off. They bump. They go to the vacancy wherever it is and the vacancy happens to be in the right. jail and so uh, major jack took the opportunity to stay out on the street and he chose to transfer to morfield township as far as sharing the deputy i've thought about that and i've talked you know about that the legality of it i mean that can be overcome is that correct as far as the legality of being able to to know and i and i understand exactly what you're saying about 50 percent 50 percent it may be 60, 41 days. It could be exactly. 80, 40 40 days. Which is actually happening right now anyway. Yep. The yep. same thing is happening, just like mm -hmm. you said. A deputy from Park Lane may have to come up here and respond. We may have to help out when we have a deputy or vice versa. I live on Main Street and I see him zipping by both directions, you know, trying to help each other out. So I think I would be, if I saw the legality of it and know exactly how we're going to structure it, that I would be for something like that also, instead of giving up another deputy totally. And you mentioned that it would cost us close to $100,000 per deputy is what we're paying. Well, I mean, it's a little less than I think. It's less than that. Yeah, it's By the time you figure it was 98. I just asked Mr. Jones for this. It was uh, for when, when uh, Mr. Majek left, it was, uh, he was family, so he had, it was 98,000 something, well, 800. That's about as close to 100,000. 92. 92, okay, thank you. Insurance is a big factor. Right, exactly. And we have a breakdown of all that, and we understand that. Uh, so those are questions I have, and, and I would be, I would definitely like to see if that's something that could be put together, you know, as far as a, a deputy sharing a deputy. I'm sorry, Matt, you would like to speak again, sir? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to clarify something. Uh, the question was answered, asking Nancy about deputies from there coming here. It made it sound like we're getting all the help. I would disagree with that. I think if you looked at it eye for eye, we'd probably send more your way than it's this way. And and I don't argue with that. It might be 50%, you know, but let's not make it look one way. It's like it. Well, there's, it there's, there's been four up here and one down there, so it right. has to be. Right, but it goes both ways. But my question is this. As far as sharing a deputy, um, you brought up a very good question, or a very good thing about 
how he's telling one thing, somebody else. So he's going to have you as the boss. He's going to have her as the boss. He's going to have them as the boss. I think that is a major drawback. I, I, I think that could be a big recipe for disaster. But aren't we already doing that? It's not on paper, but we are, with what she said and with what I just said, we are already sharing a deputy. If they need our deputy, he goes. If we need theirs, they go. So why do we need to complicate up the paperwork and say 50% there, 50% here, 52, 48, whatever? Leave it be. You know, so that, that the reason is cost sharing. You know, the reason is cost sharing. Cost sharing is the reason. If they're paying 50% of it, we're paying 50%. That's the cost sharing you know, we're looking at. Well, I just don't understand. Yeah, that's my sense. Well, one of the things that I could see a difficulty, and I think there's a difficulty years ago that was talked about, is that they have a levy where all the money comes out of the general fund. You know, so that was, I think that was a point of contention at that time. So I think that's right. that's a big problem. They have a five year renewable, I believe, is what they have. And most of them put on a one mil levy just for law enforcement right. and a contract with the deputies uh, and it's going to bring in I think 265,000 is what they've said per year per year and that's what our income tax increase would be solely for police coverage police protection and exactly. instead of it being a property tax so it's an income tax we look at Mr. Reynolds. Uh, as, as director for the city manager, uh, our bulletproof vests, we pay for them correctly. No, the sheriff has started. Because I remember we paid for them one time. Yeah, recently started. Right. Yeah, yeah because they used to be the American Legion donated money. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Several people went down. Yeah, the American Legion donated one of them. And we also, the county this year, you know, uh, the attorney general said that you need this kind of computer and this system. and the county uh, IT decided that the county would pay for all new computers and and all desktop computers uh, so that they could be maintained by the county and so that there's no event of uh, sabotage or break in or anything like that. So, you know, those are the additional things. But with the vests, if you know Ken Majorsack goes, which he did in Moorfield, his vest goes with it. Right. And we put in, uh, I think, $13,000 this year. The best, they used to be about 125 bucks, and now they're five to $600 a piece. Okay, Council, and we, because I'd like to turn it over to the public if they'd like mm -hmm. to say something at this point. Is everybody okay at the moment? Yes. That's all with you, Sheriff. If we, is there anybody out in the audience that would like to say anything about the police protection, if you would? Could you go up to the podium and hit the, Identify yourself, please. And identify yourself at the podium, please. My name is Ronald Cox, 202 Bell Drive. First of all, I respect you for putting the badge on, and I commend you guys for doing the job you do. What I'd like to know, how do you figure your breakdown per day, again, when you present it to the city? I have that a copy of the money wise? Yeah, money wise. I have a copy of the page from the contract if you'd like to see it. It has the breakdown with salary, sick pay, Medicare, workers' comp, life insurance, if you would like to see that. Yeah, so it, it, it depends on the deputy and how long they've been at the sheriff's office and what step they're in as far as that contract goes. We're, the deputies are union and they're negotiating a new contract right now. And, uh, you know, they have an hourly rate. They have set uh, contract obligations to go to court. They get two hours minimum overtime. Uh, the big factor, it, Medicare, health insurance, uniform allowance, they get $900 a year for uniform allowance. Uh, it's not just us making these figures up. These are the exact amounts. And like I said, we used to charge a 5% administrative fee for my time, my chief deputy, and everybody else, we don't do that. These are bare bones dollars. What it costs us, we pass on to the city. Oh, yeah, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. Now, is it required by their union to have a vehicle to drive back to home? It is not. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Again, we're still in place at this point, if you would. Please, anyone else? 
Good staff, everyone. Anything you'd like to say at this point? Um, I did have a question regarding vehicles. You and I had talked about this before. Um, it had been suggested that it might be better for either the city or for your department if you took over all the vehicles. We'd had that discussion, but it didn't sound like it was going to be advantageous to your department whatsoever. Now, you know, a new vehicle to equipment and everything, I would say is 40000 yeah, at least 35. Yeah. Um, and um, we buy under state bid. We have our own mechanics at the county garage, but we still take them down to PR Communications to do the install, and we're taking them to Huber Heights to do the setup. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, we're talking about taking them to Huber Heights. Huber Heights. But, um, you know, these vehicles, you're fortunate. Um, you know, Lee lives in the city, uh, Beller lives just north of town, and Dale Stahl lives just a, a mile north. Uh, you know, uh, you're, they're not traveling 20 miles back and forth, and it's not in the contract that they have to drive a car home. If they have that car assigned to them, it's proven. They get more miles, they take better care. Uh, we only look at one driver. If they're burning up brakes or tires, we know who's responsible. Um, and it saves. The other thing, we used to buy cars every year, and now we have deputies, and they're going to be in that same car at least five to six years. Uh, these Crown Vicks, we were getting 200000 on them. The Dodge Chargers just aren't holding up. But uh, for us to take over your cars, is not really cost effective. You, your one is a 98. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand the Jeep's still in the garage. Um, you know, our, our Chargers are 2007, and uh, their opposite problem with them is they don't get the mileage, so they get some sit and idle time, which is sometimes worse than the, the highway driver. Anybody any more questions for Sheriff and Chief Deputy? Anybody at all? Council, anyone? I will meet with township trustees, city manager, you know, my chief deputy and I will make ourselves available whenever to talk about trying to resolve some issues and, and put our best foot forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you. 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 Will you have my email? I think all of us, if not Kim does, and she can email me 24 hours a day. And Thanks for all the support for them here. We really appreciate it. So we're going back to talking about the cut. I'd like to ask council to remember that we did put this on the ballot in November. And and in my opinion, it may not be your opinion, but in my opinion, by them voting no, when they knew it was for police expenses, they are saying they, they don't want to spend the money for the police coverage. So if we're going to make cuts, to me, where they're telling us to make them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say something? Sure. Okay. And I agree partly with that. And also, what I think they're saying, you know, they're saying is we need to get a little bit more creative in you know, what we're doing. Um, you know, I'm going to say this anyway. Yeah. I'm going to be like you, Rick. I'm just going to say it anyway. Right. Okay. <laughs> That, uh, John, could you speak up a little bit? That, that there, are some, that there are some people that don't trust us still, you know, and we have, you know, we have to earn their trust even more. I've been here almost 10 years, and I keep hearing the same thing over 10 years. You know, like like you said before, it's the previous administration, but they kind of relate it back to us. So we have to kind of, you know, uh, try to earn it, no matter how much it slapped us in the face, you know. And um, I, don't, with that. I just think, people, yeah, I, we do, I bet you do. I, I, was, I was out there in the poor reception. She was getting bereaved by somebody, and she didn't need to get that. <laughs> I'd like to take and slap her. But anyway, uh, but as far as, you know, I, I am really in favor of talking to Nancy, you know, and her group out there and see how we can work this out, you know, and, and I hope the sheriff does come back, you know, and we can talk it all out. You know, I like the idea of three deputies now. Um, I'm ready to compromise with the three. Two, I'm um, a little bit hesitant on. 
you know, but I remember I'm the guy who had the house broken into, and within 15 minutes I had six deputies in my living room. Where the six deputies come out of two, I have no idea. <laughs> so, yeah. I had the same scenario, John, by the way. Mine was kicked in my back door and some guns were stolen. And I called and they had what they call a rubber, and he looks like a SWAT guy, and he was there before our deputy was at that point, so. The service is there. There's no doubt about it. The sure. and I think they do an excellent job. I just wish we could afford to keep on the four or five, even if we were to pass the call to eleven, the income tax that would help tremendously. So we'll just have to see what happens again. But we still need to make the cuts to keep our budget in. We need to make cuts. Of, I brought the figure of what 150,000 is what you're looking at that you would. I, like the, the I at think we were looking up more than 250 to 300 at least. 300? 250 <laughs> to 300 to be comfortable, to be able to have some money in there. I mean, the way it is right now, if there is one thing, one piece of equipment, one lot well that goes down, we are out of luck. And that's not the way to run a city. No, it's not. That it's just, you know, question. we've been talking about this since we did the street level. We've been talking about, we projected it out. We could see that this was going to happen, that the money was gradually going down and gradually going down. And we, eventually you have to, you have to stop the hemorrhaging. <laughs> you got something? Yeah, I got a lot. Well, I think you may want to run me out. Okay. Everybody may want to run me out, I don't know, especially you, Kim. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> this didn't just start yesterday. We didn't start last week. Well, I went to get that couple of minutes to here because I don't know what else is going to be like. This didn't start last week. It didn't start last month. It started a long, long time ago. And I look right around the table and go from there to here to you to you and everybody. It's all of our faults. Okay? Every one of us. It should have never came to the point that we said, hey, we have to lay off two deputies. It should have first came to a point to say, we're going to have to lay off one. We're going to fix something here pretty damn soon. Okay? That didn't happen. Uh, I know you and I disagree with this. But for five years, we've thrown five to $9,000 out the window on West Cap. Okay? What? I, on West, West Cap. I said after the first year, Kim, that that's money going out the tailpipe. Last count, there's less than one person, less than two people per trip ride on that bus. Okay? So we need to get rid of that. The pool. That's four thousand dollars a year. Well, but that's that's a start. You don't look at something and say, I'm only saving four thousand dollars because if you look at ten four thousand dollar items, guess what? You got four thousand okay? dollars. In, in defense of Westcat, if you let it go, we'll never have a bus out here again. It's been forty years to get bus service out here. We have fought and fought and fought to get a grant and to have it out here. There are people Can't, that depend on it. It's four thousand dollars a year. And I like what you just said, that there hasn't been a bus in 40 years. There's a reason there hasn't one been one in 40 years, because it can't make any money. If that was your bus and you was paying for it, it would not be here. If it was my bus, it wouldn't have lasted the first year. It if I was longer than a year to start a new transit and system. And Kim, bottom line, it's not making any money. We're spending money on it, and it's not doing anything, okay? I, please don't take it personally. That's not what it's I do take okay. it personally because I worked very hard but to get that bus I know you started. did. The whole city's worked hard for everything, but some things do not work, okay? And the bus is not working. It needs to go. I don't okay? think two years is a fair okay. trial. Yes, okay. We'll just have to dip around that, okay? Because I'm going to turn around and contradict myself, okay? And so I'm not picking on you. It's, it's all of us, okay? I'm sitting here looking at Valerie about the pool, okay? And golly, I like you and then Joe accustomed to both down here and play down the ball game because you threw the bat and I'll never forget that, but that's way back. <laughs> you know, but I'm, I want to keep the pool. I would not vote to close the pool. And I see people sitting there and say, well, wait a minute. You're talking about a damn bus that only costs three thousand dollars a year, but you've got a pool that costs forty. Mr. Zabach, a month or so ago back and spoke. We can't shut down everything. We have to keep something because if we don't, there'll be no one in the car. Okay? We get, you know, so there's some things that we're going to have to do. I'm with, I think it was Michael or whoever, John, said the people came forward and said they don't want to deputies. They're perfectly willing to live with two. Guess what? That's what we're going to do. And that's what we should do. 
say, okay, we're going to do that. I will tell you straight out, I'm dead set against sharing one. Don't want to share one. He's going to have Gene Kelly for a boss. He's going to have you for a boss. He's going to have them for a boss. He's not going to know which way he's going. And it's going to be a constant problem. We've had that problem before with them, and we don't share deputy with them. I've heard deputies complaining day after day. Well, they sent me down here on some Mickey Mouse call that I shouldn't have made a with. People up here didn't need to be more, okay? So, but anyway, I don't know how much money can be cut, Kim. Okay, the trash in them, you know, there was all from the paper to go calling people. We didn't call anybody. It's never been said that we was going to get rid of trash in them. We wanted to know how much it cost. I know you threw out a figure one time for $20,000, and you said when you did that, you know, um, I don't know exactly what it is. We'll have to look at it. That was just a guess. So we didn't call anybody. No one at this table has ever said we're going to get rid of trash in there. So we're going to look at it. We're going to see how much it costs, okay? So, but anyway, with everything said, I think we do cut the deputies back. Valerie, with what I said about the pool, I wasn't at the last meeting, but I understand you said there were changes that could be made to save money. They should have been done a long time ago, okay? It's, you don't close the door when the horse is gone. It's kind of late. Should have been fixed a long time ago. And please don't take that person, you know. Because we're sitting here, and we should have been on top of it as well. We should have been on top of this five years ago and said we shouldn't be here right now. When I say we're not talking about all this, not her, not low, everybody's sitting here. We missed the boat. We didn't get on top of it, and we should have, okay? But now's the time to correct it. And I will say this openly, I never met you, sir, but I did talk to people after the meeting, and I like Problem, I let him know first, he lets me, he lets whoever the deputy is on duty at that time know. Um, if there's a heads up that, you know, I need to let him know that such and such is going on, can you let the deputies know? He is the person that does that. He doesn't get paid for that. He, you know, because he's got other duties with the county. So this $1,157, the sheriff is saying all he does is do a report. That's a lot more than that. I'm already the safety director per the charter. That is another one of my titles. And the police administrator, the fire chief, both work under me. Mm -hmm. So I don't really want to take on another duty either <laughs> as far as doing the report. Not that it would be maybe that time consuming. But. All right, and then my second one is on here in the uh, I stick this just to, uh, I was looking at this and this. I don't see our, um, what we would pay out for a law director in either one of these in the 2014. They're not an employee, they're a contractor. They're a contractor. Right, this is just employees who are employees of the city. Okay, and then do you know how much that would cost the city, like a rough estimate? Because if that, I mean, if it's going to cost us money, I mean. For a law director? Yeah, for a law director, how much would that typically cost us? <coughs> it's not in here. It's hmm? how much you use them, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's based on how, but I mean, we would obviously have like a standard right, time, like right. an average time. So, I, I mean, I think that probably should, we should add that in here so we know what we'll be paying out with that as well. Can I ask what you're looking at so I know what form you're talking uh, about? The uh, sheet you just gave us today. <clears throat> but these are in there and then general fund is not broken It's out. just part of the general. Right, it's part of all the general fund. And the budget was 44000 The many budget that had 44000 That's That's it. Probably on the low end, but yeah. yeah. That's, what, how that's a number. That was what was budgeted last year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll, yes. yeah. <coughs> I was just able to, I couldn't find it, so I just wanted to yeah. check. That's it. Also? Oh, yep. Anyone else? I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I need to ask you how, I know everyone's trying to get out. If the pool set, for example, for two, three years, if you decided to close it, if it was, what would it cost to get it back up to par to start another day? Just a dollar. I had those numbers when you were, you were not at the work session because I talked to Jason last time. Uh, I imagine if we only start capital five thousand a year, but I imagine if it's side, it's going to be a whole lot more. You could double or triple it. Um, just even when we blow out the lines, things just age. Right. Uh, for instance, this year our Virginia Grand Baker Act drains are up for replacement. We just I just found this out today, so we're going to spend about three thousand right now on top of. The original capital we normally do every year, so that's coming no matter what. Open, you know, as we have to put new trains in. Um, 
What else did he give you? He just said that uh, it would be the same repairs as we usually do. They'd just be a little bit more intense or severe if it was closed for a year. So instead of maybe 10000 it would be maybe 18000 Well, that, that's very possible. And typically, that's in pump and boiler, because each of those run around the $20,000 range in needing repairs for those. And grant possible vandalism, of course. What's that? Possible vandalism also. Oh, oh absolutely. Definitely vandalism. Be a wonderful thing if we could find somebody that would like to lease the pool and could make it into a money maker. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there is such a thing nowadays. I can, as I said, give you background because um, I've read articles and stuff about this whole contract thing. That is the reason that the gentleman gave it up in the first place is he wasn't making any money. Um, almost all private. I had a call from South Charleston a couple years ago. I said, hey, we're considering closing our pool. We don't know what to do. I said, we currently fund it with the general fund. You know, like you do? I said, yeah. I said, but that's not becoming feasible anymore. And they said, well, what's your rate? So what's our rates compared to Splash Zone? Places like Splash Zone and the Aquatic Center over here in Hoover are not doing what I would call well. They're not profiting and being able to put money back for that uh, future. Um, they're in the same boat. Uh, as you know, their, their fees are higher. Um, we, our rates are, when we, when we work on rates for, oh, Jesus, years, I mean, we go on this all the time, but how much can we do? Um, what were the people willing to pay? You know, what can we do to bring them in extra, extracurricular activities inside? We trimmed it all except for making people pay for their own equipment, uh, for instance, their suits. So, I mean, life cards. Yeah, life cards, life cards. Um, you know, my names are already, they're the lowest of all pools. Um, and they share, I have three managers, but that doesn't mean I have three on at one time, but that just gives them a break. So yeah, where about is uh, bears, it, it can be, it just, what, weather really only is the, the uh, factor that brings the pool near the zero line. Other than that, um, we have looked at really trying to increase pool passes. Um, daily gate sales is really where you make your money. People come in every day, um, but you know, what, what can the community afford is where we've really struggled with trying to make the pool passes affordable. Thank you. Would you like to speak up? I Would bet. you go up to the podium, please? I bet. Identify yourself, please. <laughs> um, my name is Val Herdman, and I've been at the pool since 2002. Since then, I'm not afraid to tell you I started making $10. I now only make eleven twenty-five, So that tells you who I'm there for. I'm not there to become rich to the pool. I'm there for our community and for the kids. I have seen kids grow up at that pool. I have seen kids learn how to swim at that pool. I have had parents come back to tell me that my child saved another child by reaching, instead of getting into the water, the lesson they learned at our pool. That's a service to our community. We have people, like I said before, not just coming from us. They're coming from Tip, Troy, Bellbrook, Fairborn, because we are one of the few public pools that are left. Some of the things that I have looked at my budget, and I will tell you, since Mr. Kitko brought me the budget, and Kelly Whit was with us um, three years ago, we started monitoring what we spent. Every year I have a book down there at my pool, at our pool, that shows we have a balance of what I can spend. And every time I go to Sam's or every time we buy chemicals from Miami products, I'm subtracting. I am keeping us within what I know I'm allowed to spend. In 2012, if you look at the spreadsheet that has the pool, that was the year we only had to take $1,000 from the general fund because that was the hot, cranking summer. That was the summer that we saw 90 degrees almost every day. If you've also noticed at the pool, we do everything we can. If it's not a hot day, I'm sending kids home. I'm sorry guys, I know you want to get a job paid this summer, but we don't have it. We are cutting every area we can. We are bringing in swimming lessons, which is a revenue now for us. We are bringing in parties. We had our first community give back to the community day. I saw a few of you down there. Didn't see all of you, but I saw a few of you. Until you actually get down there to see a pool party in action, swimming lessons in action, you don't see what we're giving back to this community. I know we're taking out of the general fund, and I'm a taxpayer myself. But this is something that we need to keep in our area. 
Some of the ideas that I thought we could come up, just like Mr. Kit could have said, our uniforms come out of the budget. Employees need to pay for those. Um, we also talked about raising the cost of the concession. Do we want to go to a fast food concession? No. We have dominoes. We have the, the gist of what people bring in. We make money in our concession. We also talked about something that I was looking at. When school goes back into session, I suggest we close the pool then. Because then we're only keeping it open on the weekends, but we're keeping those chemicals in Monday, Sunday through Monday, Friday. So when school goes back, then we need to look at closing our school and not be open from Memorial Day to Labor Day. That's something we need to look at too. Because in those weeks, we are wasting money. When we only can open through the week ends. Because the opening at 4 o'clock does not cut it. Nobody comes to the pool after 4 o'clock when school is back in. In August, when we start with all of our youth sports in the evenings, after Clark County Fair, we adjust our hours because people quit coming in the evenings. During the day, we also have looked at, I've tracked these, I don't have any statistics, this is just things that we've tracked down. Monday through Friday, when we open at noon, noon to five is our busiest time. That's when we have our kids, our moms with the kids. Five o'clock, it's like the curtain is lifted and our parents leave because they go home and cook dinner for their spouses. They go home and do the parent activities they're supposed to be doing with their families. So that's another thing that we can look at. We can start cutting hours. Maybe it'll only be open from noon to six. And then, um, you know, at first I thought I was going to come in and suggest only opening Monday through Friday in the summer. But there we sit again. We still have chemicals in our pool on Saturday and Sunday. I'm willing to look at a skeleton crew on Saturday and Sunday. Maybe have people on call and only bring in the one manager and a lifeguard. And then have a, two or three lifeguards on call if we need them. I'm, I'm willing to work with, you, with this. I know where we're at. I hear a lot of things. Oh, your boiler set at 80. Set it down to 75. If you think that's going to save us money, set it down to 75. It, it's great if we have a hot crank in summer. But if we have a cool summer like we did this last summer, that boiler needed to be set at 75 to 80 to keep our people coming that was there. Um, I don't know. I just, I've been racking my brains because this is a service to our kids. We have to keep this going to our kids. If we close the pool, what else is there for our children in this community to do? The skate park? That's great. But I can't see us all utilizing the skate park. Our kids need something to do. If we don't give them something to do in the summer, that's when we're going to see vandalism occurring. We're going to see a lot more happening on our streets. So, um, I don't know. I'm willing to work with you guys. We work hand in hand with everybody over here at this table. And um, I can tell you, when I started in 2012, I didn't worry about a budget. I was there, I had a job, I came, I did my service, I went home, and I left. Now I'm here to speak for our kids, and this is to my heart dear. So I do not want to see it closed, and you know, we're willing to do whatever we need to do to keep it open. So, thanks. Thank you, Rob. Yes, Um, okay, now give, give me some ideas what you could do, though. I mean, give me some really good ideas that you can make money on, you know, and, you know, and do it fairly quickly because you didn't make enough gate sales and enough pool memberships to actually pay for the pool at all. You know, I agree with you there. You know, you know, so I ran a business for over five years, you know, and I dealt with negatives you know, through the whole restaurant business. And it's not a pretty sight, you know, and I had to make a final decision to get rid of my baby. So what can you help us with really quick here? You know, I don't know. I honestly don't know. The only thing I can think of right now is when we sell our season passes for buy a year, get a year half off, or buy a year, the first time we did it, we did buy a year, get a year free. Um, we sold a lot. 43. And then if you notice, every other year, 2011 is when we did that, and then 2013 is when we did it again. Um, you know, once again, it is a year to do that. But uh, weather permitting is where this pool is. If we have a hot summer, we're going to do great. If we have a cold summer, it's not going to be so good. Um, I don't know. The only thing I can think of right off the top of my head is I would love to see more um, pool rentals. 
I would love to see getting more community things involved where we open it up and have like our organizations come in and family picnics. I know, um, you know, Silver Lake used to do that and they're gone now. Um, we've had lots of inquiries about coming in. Um, there's an organization at Sacred Heart Church that comes in. They've been in twice. Um, I want to say it's the Knights of Pythian. They've come in and they've had a big, huge picnic there. They pay to rent that. I, I don't know if we want to do a more of a, a rental outside of our community where we say, hey, look, we're one of the few pools that are left. They're willing to bring in community picnics and things. Um, you know, we balance things that. I don't know where to go. All I know is I'm saving every penny I can at that pool. And we're cutting every spot that we can. But if it's not a hot summer, then we can't do anything. Yeah, I, you're a good manager. Because you know, I saw your numbers. And you worked with them. I can tell the numbers. So you, you know, your, your staff is really good. Thanks, so. nice John. Bill, I'd like to say something. Yeah. Um, you, you had some, some interesting ideas when you were, you were first talking. There's a, whole, there's a whole bunch of things, and it's a lot to digest. Could you possibly, if that's okay, write that out and send it to an email, at least to me. I don't know. I'm sure everyone else would like, would like it, but write out your ideas and, and let me I know. I have um, Mr. Kitko's email. Can I email it to you, and then you forward it on to everybody? Yeah, that would be perfect. Thank okay. you. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Now, does a, does a pool party, not, not, not a fundraiser pool party, I mean, because the, when the pool holds a pool party, if it's warm weather, does it typically boost revenue for the day? I will tell you, we have um, Good Vibrations donates their service for a pool pass every year. We get three parties out of them. That's way more than, I mean, their services outweighs the cost of a pool pass by far all means. Um, so we get the better end of that deal. They come in, so we have a live DJ at this pool party, um, and it's great. I mean, the kids know about it. We have adults there, and if you've never been to a pool party, you need to come because it's wall-to-wall -wall people. Um, there's dancing on the deck. There's people dancing in the pool. It's promoting our activities. It's a nice thing, and yes, it brings in the revenue for that day. And actually, we've, I don't have my books with me right now, but when, when we have a pool party, we close it out. So we know exactly what we bring in for that pool party. And the last couple of years, me being the, the number crunch I am, we have not had a pool party in an evening that's been a public pool party where we've lost money. We have not had it. And like I said, if I get out there and the pool party is not big and I don't need all my lifeguards, they're going home. Because we are there to make money for the city. I do know I, I deal with people's money, not my money. Well, it is my money because I'm a city person too. But I deal with the community's money. And I know that. So I'm not out there just spending it every way I can. Thank you. Thank you. Say yeah. I like having the pool open. I don't like having to pay 50000 under our current financial straight. I, I understand. I wanted that. to say that so that those people who are actually paying attention, I'm not against the pool. I've just got to find some business money someplace. We are going on the ballot for more money in May. If we get that, I'm confident that the discussion we've had concerning the pool tonight will have gone for naught because I'm confident that my fellow council members will continue business as usual if we get the additional money. My concern is this, is that I already have our lifeguards asking me about the pool situation. Yeah. They want to find other jobs in the summer. This last summer, I was stressing with lifeguards. And if we wait until we have it on the ballot, by then our licenses are already due. Um, everything that we have to have this pool, we cannot wait until the second week of May to decide, OK, Val, here's your pool. Let's go. When do you start? When, when does actual preparation, both physical and? Howie and I start talking in January. In when? January. We start working on it. It's too cold out there now. I no, I know. I don't want to get to it right now. But in April is when we actually we have to get all of our flyers and everything ready to go. But we start spinning our wheels in January about what we see coming up. So regardless of what happens in May, it makes no difference. we got to open you now or close you now, right? Well, and it's just it's our license are due. License are due in March. And most of the preparation starts right around April 14th is when the guys start going down to do all the repairs. 
it takes that long by the time we painting and fill the pool. So yeah, we have about a month and a half of preparation before the pool opens. And most of our flyers, as I said, my final saying would be is, we sent out about 5,000 flyers, plus an article in the New Carolina News, plus an article in the Springfield News Sun. So we do promote the pool um, in that, and that big pool article that everyone sees about the local pools coming open. So yeah, we're, and it's out in Northwestern schools and Tecumseh. So every elementary student yes. in Northwestern Well, we even hit the middle school this last year. Um, the middle school students, how we hit them is, they weren't able to last year, but they've already asked me, they've already been given the clear, they, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade all want to come back to our pool and spend a 6th grade day, a 7th grade day, and an 8th grade day, where we make money on them too. Um, it's just there, and they're already asking. They're trying to get that in their calendar too, so we need to decide. I'm not saying right now, but I'm just letting you know, May's too late. And I want to speak up for the kids, so that's I mean, I'm here for that because it is a service for our kids. Yes, right, right. Thank you, Melissa. Um, Valerie, if everything you've said sounds good, but it all depends on what weather, correct? Weather. Okay. So you can have the biggest crowd meeting you've ever had, and if the sun goes away and get a couple sprinkles, it's gone, right? I have a question. It might be the dumbest question ever asked. How do you help me out here? I, I've been to the pool several times, okay? I don't know how much inside room that you can do anything with. Is there anything, and I mean absolutely anything, that will draw, we're talking probably what, 80% of the people there are kids, okay, to get the kids there, if it rains, to stay there, to have some activity, something, help, anything that they would want to be there even if it's raining and they cannot get in the water. Now, I'm not talking about lightning storms and tornadoes coming, but a cold day where it's chilly to get there and chilly. Something that would keep them there, that they would eat a candy bar, drink a pop, do whatever to stay there and have fun. I don't know that we have room to do anything like that. I think it's worth thinking about. You know, I don't, I don't know if it's feasible, but we've got to think of something. Anyone else? Wow. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Appreciate your passion, believe me. You want to do it. Anyone have anything else to speak on up here at the moment? Citizens, anybody like to say anything else? I'd like to say something on pool. Would you go on up to the podium again, sir? You know, when they first bought the pool, the YMCA was going to go in with them. In two years, the Y was going to take it over. Previous council, not two people here, agreed to let the Y out of it because the Y wanted to buy the building south of town. This pool hasn't made any money. We keep up the dump money in a dead horse. I commend her efforts. But if it's not making any money, why do we want to keep putting money in something? We don't need that. Right now, you need to cut your losses here, close the pool down, and move on. Because there's more system and more taxpayer money into something that ain't making it. Now, that's how I feel about it. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Anyone out there? Staff, anyone? Have we come to a consensus on any of the cuts? I know you can't make a vote in a work session, but we got to finalize the budget to bring to you, and it's got to balance. <laughs> Mr. Zandak wants to say something. I believe, from what I've heard, speak up if you would, sir. From what I've heard council say, I believe. There more or less is a consensus on going to two deputies. That's the biggest chunk of money. Uh, we can't vote, but am I hearing right or am I thinking wrong? I was keeping a stroke count as far as sharing or not sharing. I didn't get everybody's, but I got uh, three to not share and two to share. Two of you I don't have a response from as far as I couldn't determine. I'd, I'd have to 
go further and work out the mechanics on sharing before I said yes or no. I'd be willing to explore it, but I wouldn't be willing to commit to it at this point. I'm with you on that, Dick. Nope. There's still too many unanswered questions. Yes. Well, what we have is we now have three deputies. If we had one of them that we shared, then we could keep three deputies still at this point, but one is sharing, so we'd actually have paying, we'd be paying for two and a half. But again, you're, you're willing to find out what it, how it would work, is that correct? Yeah, and, share it up. and I'm confident that the sheriff, if we could work something out by March, by May, whatever, and it came to be that we could go another half deputy, I'm confident that the sheriff would be more than happy to throw another deputy at the two of us. So and you're saying go with two and possibly add the half of one if we can get it worked out? Is that, is that if what you're saying? If we go with two, we're right away saving $180,000 plus. Mm -hmm. If we go back for half a deputy, that drops that down to $140,000, $145,000. But geez, that's, that's a large amount of money. And we do have an unknown fiscal situation coming up in May. Uh, good, bad, or never. They're either going to vote for it or they're going to vote against it. But our income is in a substantial and significant state of flux. All we can count on is what we're getting now. That's all we've got. We might want to back off of it if we can work something out with us on a half a deputy. I don't have a problem. You know, let's see where we go. But right now, I'd say we go down to either two or none. And it's kind of scary to go to none all at once. Uh, I'd say we go, my opinion is we go to two now and we see on details with that other half deputy putting it back. That's what I think. Thank you. Yes. Opinion? Yeah. Opinion. Two deputies. And one thing that really stuck to my mind that Sheriff Kelly kind of stressed, and he stressed it real hard. He said, if you go to two deputies, don't worry, you're still going to be protected. He said, the calls are in the county. If I'm going to be protected, protected, let's go with two, worry about the third one that we can take full-time, not part-time. His words were, you will be protected. There are deputies in the county who will be here. They not, may not be here because the cat's now and waking you up, but if it's serious, they will be here. I'm all for two. He said that. I did. He said we would be protected. We, as far as the third deputy is concerned, let's face it. The sheriff does not want to lay off a deputy anywhere. He's looking out for the best interest of his people, which is exactly what he should do. He should try to find a job for that deputy rather than laying him off somewhere. And I don't have a problem with that. But I think we're going to be fine with two. I don't think we're going to be fine. I'd much rather have four. I'd really like to have six or eight. But he said we will be protected with two. And I think he also said they would not be laid off. They would be absorbed right. back into yeah. the cap to the county. Well, when he said that, I'm, to the, he was to talking the about our two. I didn't know about the third one, but yes, yeah. you're right. John, we're going to have an from you. Yeah, real quick. Um, we need to hold this up because we're out of here. Okay, we, we have two deputies at one time. You know, and Barry Kilburn was on council. He made a statement. He, he took a statistic. Uh, you know, how, you know about the crime before and the crime after. He said there's no difference from four to two. I think we had six and we went down to two. So, so you know, does that make any sense to you? Are you saying cut to two? Thank you. No, not that's okay. no we're not voting. I'm just going to say I'm sorry. Mike, do you have an opinion? Uh, my opinion was. And I kind of broke it just track back. He asked Ms. Levy that money was there, earmarked for police. The money that was left over was to be used for streets. Exactly. And it wasn't to be used for streets also. If right. there was money left over, exactly. it would be used for streets, which wasn't a lot because, the, you know, police That was so we didn't spend it someplace else. They right. wanted to save well, it. Well, we didn't police cruiser or, you know, you know whatever it may be. So uh, my opinion is that's what we asked for. 
I, in my opinion, would go down to two and stress that we can bring two back in May. Mr. McIntyre? Um, well, based on the two questions, um, I asked the sheriff, uh, the, the response that I got, I, I'm not completely sold on it. I realized that um, if you, we would still get protection if someone was breaking into a house or whatever it is, we could call somebody up at the same time. It's going to be in the newspapers that we're cutting down on deputies. And if I'm a bad guy, I'm going to go to where there's going to be fewer police cars coming down the streets. And I, I don't feel, um, I'm not happy about that decision about, about making New Carlisle a potentially less safer place. Not that it would be, but the potential's there. And it's, it's not something that I'm sitting easy with. And so I'd, I'd have to say I'm not in favor of that. But I, I understand the rationale, what everyone else is saying, and that they're all valid points, too. Keep in mind, it would be two deputies for 6,000 employees or citizens where Deventhal Township is getting by with one for over 20,000. Mm -hmm. So, pretend, you know, if you're looking for a target for crime, statistically, we have better coverage. No, I, I do understand that, yeah. I, I do understand. So. Okay, Mr. Zamblock, I think you want to give an opinion. Mr. Williams? Uh, what we're doing, by the way, like having a forum, we, like we can't be asked how we're going to vote or how we're. No, no we're just we're giving an opinion. It's totally illegal. It, it is like this is a forum. We're discussing what we want to do, and this is a vote. And it is, I'm asking like, you to give me some direction because this doesn't. The has to come from an actual council meeting, not a work session. This is in the sunshine laws, and uh, so I'm not going to give you my opinion. I will gladly give you it on council on Monday. Hey, thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, I, I'm uh, just giving an opinion again. The opinion would be that I would like to see the half, <laughs> whatever we're doing here. Uh, two deputies, I, I know we have to cut. We need to cut at least a couple of thousand, or a couple of hundred thousand dollars. So we keep getting cut and cut and cut from the state, keeps cutting our money. Duffel Township has the same problem. All entities have the same problem. When you don't have the money to be able to pay for the people that you need to be able to furnish the different ideas that we have for the city, police protection, whatever it may be, we need to have this passed. And I'm hoping that it passes in May. It's going to be on the ballot, so we'll find out at that point. But that's what I'm saying. So what we need to do, I guess, is actually uh, at our next council meeting, we'll have to ask at that point and go from that point. Okay. So anyone else, anything out there at all, please? Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and close. Do you have anything to say? I'll ask about the pool at the next council meeting, too, then. Okay. Appreciate it. Council, anyone else? Anything? Okay, we are all uh, meeting as ever for this evening. Go Bucks, and thank you all for being here. Thank you.